when I got into college, it was kind of more jazz, jazz, you know, like early Tony Williams stuff. And, and Paul Motion is like top five for me. Like, I love Paul. And I got to see Paul a bunch before he died. And yeah, he taught me a lot about life. Just like he's such a. What are some deep things dude. he taught you about life? Well, like, I mean, I mean, it sounds corny to say that, but he's just like one of those guys, like, if people, a lot of people will say like, oh, he's just, either he's like so flowery, he just plays on these ECM records and just kind of plays cymbals, or he's just kind of basic and he doesn't really sound like he knows how to play the drums. But like, he's got so, such a deep understanding of music and he's leaving so much out and leaving so many melodies to the listener that it's like a deeper approach to playing melodies yeah. than like a Max Roach or somebody like that who kind of spells it out for you more. It's like it's like the next level of that like impressionistic melodic playing mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but not only that but i saw him on a couple i saw him on a gig in new york a couple years like five six seven years ago and it was a really bad gig it was like the corniest like c major bossa nova ecm record that they just he just made an ecm record with these guys i'm not gonna say who they are but and the music was just going nowhere and so he was doing crazy shit like just like you know, the tempo's here, and then all of a sudden he's just like, and everybody turns around and looks at him. He's like, he did that on purpose. Like, he just wants to snap you out of it. So you're like, like, think, motherfucker, like, play something that's not stupid, you know? Yeah. And so he was doing all those choices, and then finally it was like, time for an open dr palm motion drum solo before the next, like, boring C major bossa nova. And it was like he was trying to end the world. Like, he played the craziest shit I've ever heard come out of the drums. Like really bright peisty symbols, and it was super aggressive. And like, I don't know what happened. Like, I was just like, "Holy shit!" You know, just like laughing and kind of crying, and like, "What is going on?" And then they just went into this really kind of corny bossa nova. But he was clear, like he's like trying to direct the music, you know. And then I saw him play again with a, a younger great sax player at the Village Vanguard, and the, and he was much more happy because the music was great and all that stuff. But there was a point in which the sax player kind of went into like running scales mode you know and they're just playing something like like around that tempo and paul and paul just goes like eesh, like hits the ride symbol in a very certain way so that the sax player just kind of jolted out of what he was doing and just started playing beautiful melodic thoughtful stuff again just one cymbal hit was like wake up yeah it was like it was like a whole sentence worth of like cussing somebody out just with like you know so i mean that kind of shit is like that's some mastery shit that yeah. you can't teach and how do you get that, you know? Like, only really the masters have that, you know? Yeah. Or I, I hate the word the masters. Well, that was at the, towards the end of his life. That was towards the end of his yeah. life. But I think he maybe had that always and you just didn't... You know what I mean? You just didn't hear it because you just took it for granted as part of, like, the sound of the Keith Jarrett trio on that night or whatever, you know? But getting to yeah. see it and it was yeah. like, you feel the dynamic in the room and yeah. like, oh, this isn't really happening and he, like, makes a shift that makes everybody... You know what I mean? Yeah. So...